Hey, welcome back. I have another video, and this time here is a Tomb King video, unlike the most recent uh, series of Old World videos, where we're either getting rules or, for the past few months, a, a series of looks at the Bretonians. We're finally getting a look at a new Tomb Kings model, and it is a very cool one. This is either a uh, priest or a king riding on top of a necrolith bone dragon. There was a rumor a while back that said the uh, Tomb Kings were going to get a dragon. And it does seem like in the past they had used dragons uh, as mounts. And uh, that, you know, uh, now that they're all dead and undead, they have uh, also brought the dragons back into service. So very cool. Uh, the first version we get here. This is the Tomb King riding on a dragon. I do assume it'll be kings and not princes. Um, often the the hero level would not have access to the same like super impressive models that the lord levels could have. Uh, that wasn't always true, but um, usually the big centerpiece models were meant for lords, and I assume it's gonna, you know, comparatively be the same thing. I have no idea <coughs> if. Um, there's going to be heroes that are hero and lord, but, you know, I do think there will be some tier of characters. I've already talked about that. Anyways, uh, so we get Mumra. He is up here riding on his dragon. He's up on a on a dais. He's, like, looking down from his pulpit, whatever you want to call it. Um, you know, leading his legions of, the, uh, of, uh, of skeleton warriors and chariots and whatnot. I'm hoping that this guy gets an 18-inch aura bubble in 8th edition. You could either have your, your your standard general bubble for leadership and whatever else he offered was 12 inches. But if you were on the big stuff, it, it bumped out to 18, sometimes 24 inches. And I really hope the same thing happens here. I think that this guy is really impressive. I'm looking at this thing, and I'm feeling like from like the bottom of the base to the top of this... Uh, we're talking, like, you know, this is like a 10-inch tall model. Um, maybe I'm, like, really eyeballing this wrong, but this feels like it's going to be close to 10 inches tall. Um, at least 8. It's got to be at least 8 inches tall, and I think it's closer to 10. Um, I think it'd be kind of disappointing if he had a relatively small, uh, leadership aura. I think 18 plus inches is kind of the minimum I want to see on this guy. Some people don't like that stuff. A lot of people didn't like the big centerpiece models in 8th edition. That's fair. Um, you know, we each had our own editions that we liked. Uh, I still really love 3rd edition 40k. I still really love 6th edition and 8th edition fantasy. Um, but yeah, I did like a lot of 8th edition over the uh, 7th and 6th edition just because I felt it was flashier. And I, I do like that, I won't lie. I like the old style stuff, but I do like the flashy new stuff too. Uh, anyways, leading into the model itself, big, giant, impressive dragon, overhangs his base in all the right ways, um, covered in jewelry, has like, I don't know, I feel like this is like a crocodile-looking head, he's got like this sort of like frill um, crest, like you'd see on like, I don't know, like a triceratops, I don't know, this guy is really primordial-looking, um, this guy to me doesn't look like he's gonna match, you know, with the fancy elven dragons he's got more of a like again a primordial like base lesser species of dragon i don't know i don't know if they said the name they just call them dragons as far as i can tell um but yeah i assume this is going to be some sort of Cambrian dragon or something or like a like a like a crag dragon or i want to call it like they probably found it up in the crags um so yeah very cool. I like it. He's imposing. He's he's a scary looking dragon, um, and that's cool. You know, it's not like a I'm a zombie with rotting flesh. Scary, um, like the, like the the vampire counts dragon. More of a like actual like this is a scary monster you wouldn't want to see. Uh, just in general, just because of that face. Just even this alone. That's that's a that's a scary face. I like it. Um, very cool. Like rock and metal and precious metals uh design i really like it I, I like that there's a mix of stone and metal work i like the colors they've used i'm gonna zoom in a bit here uh, yeah he's he's very cool i really like the pose on this guy he does look like he's looking down at his armies you know giving that command 
uh, to keep things moving. <laughs> uh, tactical rock with what looks like scarabs. Um, you know, got to have a tactical rock, but at least it's got scarabs to... Uh, at least I think those are scarabs. Maybe I'm wrong. But uh, yeah, you know, tactical rocks, games workshop, they're, they're going to do it. It is what it is. I do find the, the basing interesting. Uh, this is not what you would expect on a unit from Kemri. And I think this is exactly what they're using on the units from Bretonia. So, you know, I think there's been speculation that it makes sense to just assume that the Tomb Kings are attacking Bretonia. Uh, more of a raid, probably to get back some treasure. Uh, probably some Bretonian guy was on a crusade and stole something from a tomb and brought it home. And uh, these guys know where it is. Uh, you know, pretty tropey, you know. You steal the cursed treasure, and then the uh, the owner comes back for it, Pirates of the Caribbean style, with the coins, uh, or whatnot. It's very much a you know monster movie trope for uh, the mummy and everything. I don't know. I just, I just think that makes sense based on this. Otherwise, they just for some reason decided that uh, they weren't going to have a Kemri looking base. I like my version better. Okay, um, getting this. Oops. There we go. Get my full screen back. Um, and yeah, so that's the plastic version of the of the king. You can also build him on foot and um, go with the uh, the high priest instead. Now the high priest can't be built on foot the way they're the way they're writing this, and I think it's because he's sitting, whereas he was standing. Uh, so I think a little bit of clever um, cutting and rearranging of his pose. Uh, you should be able to do both on foot. It's going to come down to how much of this part is molded into um, his plastic and what you can do to get that off and still make it look good. Um, I don't I don't know if that'll be possible if it is molded. But um, that's fine. I mean, I think anyone who's starting out uh, and is just looking to fill points, probably building him like this with him on foot makes sense just to get the maximum points. Because uh, then you can just use this guy as a hero level, have him as a lord, and uh, it would protect him probably. I guess it depends how cannons work in this game. I think I mentioned in my Empire video that cannons are uh, an unpopular unit uh, to players who like to bring monsters. They get a little frustrated with cannons. Anyways, his um, his his like palaquin is much more ornate. Uh, than the Tomb King one, which is interesting because the Tomb King you would think ha would have the ornate one, but I guess, you know, he's a warrior king, he wants to go into battle light, uh, so I can understand that, you know, he has just enough frill and pomp on his to make everyone know that he's the boss, but this guy here, um, he's the priest, he's got all the, the fancy stuff on here, he's got a canopy, it's a little, it's a little broken, he should probably replace it, but uh, it's there. And uh, he's got a really big staff. He's got this giant face. I don't know. I'm assuming that's just uh, his lord. I don't think it's this guy. I don't know if that's... Um, what's his name? Um, ah, what's the leader of um, the Tomb Kings called? Setra. I don't, I don't know if that's supposed to be Setra or what. But yeah, I mean, he's cool. I like uh, the look of all of his stuff. It's you know, the same stone. It's got that blue, red, teal that we associate with classic Tomb Kings. Lots of metal work with what looks like inlaid stone. Uh, he's got this cool heart on a scale next to something. Um, in Egyptian mythology, when a person died, uh, if you were a good person, that would be judged by basically having your heart weighed next to the feather of truth or something like that. Uh, it was a feather. If your heart weighed more than the feather, um, then it was heavy with uh, guilt and shame and whatnot. And uh, off to purgatory you went or, you know, whatever happened to you. And if it was balanced or maybe even lighter, I don't know, uh, there might have been tears of whatever they considered heaven. And uh, yeah, that was what it was. You wanted to at least balance out to the feather. Um, and I like that that's on there. I think that's a cool little touch. It does show that these guys were making a model with, um, you know, some research and thought put into it. <clears throat> I also like this cool vulture that looks like it's spreading decay as it goes. Um, I don't know what's up with that. I think there's another picture. Oh, yeah, this cat. I don't know where the cat is on here, but I like that cat. 
He is pretty cool. It's because I can't see this. I don't know where this is. Looks like there's like a ridge of bones somewhere that's got a bunch of red on it. I don't think that's flesh. I, th I assume it's more of the uh, tarp. I just don't see it in the pictures anywhere. So I don't know where the cat is, but the cat's there somewhere. Another cool touch. Yeah, those are definitely scarabs. Um, lots of jewelry on that dragon. I like it. Yeah, I don't know. This is, it looks like a, like a vulture that's dropping decay. That's pretty cool. Um, I can't tell if it's a real vulture or a spell vulture. Um, obviously, if it's a real vulture, it's got a spell coming out of its, out of its uh, tail end. But it does look like it's coming from his hand. So, it, either way, it's it's a really cool touch. <coughs> um, yeah, there's not much more to say about the model. Uh, I think the pictures really do speak for themselves. It's a it's a great looking piece. Um, I think we can be quite excited about the sculpts we're going to get. Uh, even in plastic. I think the plastics they've sh shown off so far are really good. And I'm quite excited to see how it continues to ramp up as more releases come for different factions. Uh, so yeah, once again, early 2024 alongside Bretonia. Still no confirmation if it's one box or they each have their own. <coughs> I think it just depends how much they want to... Um, you know, milk us, give us a $300 uh, dual box or two boxes for $220. Uh, you know, I feel like with Games Workshop, we know which one they'd rather do. I also, am a, again, I've said this already, I'm a little disappointed by the fact that um, it's only this guy being shown off. But I do want to say, I think it's because um, the old plastic kits are not good. Um, and just gonna just gonna say it, I I've never really liked the Tomb King plastics. Uh, the Eighth Edition ones were good. I like the big snake guys. I like the the Tomb Guard that they came out with in plastic. I like the Necro Sphinx, and those are all things they've said are coming back. Um, I assume though that the rest of this box is going to be this guy plus a mix of uh, some of the Tomb King Eighth Edition stuff. I hope. Uh, but that's going to be way too much 6th edition plastic. And 6th um, edition plastic kits are, I, I mean, like, they hold a special place in my heart. Uh, there's a lot of them that I like. Uh, same with 7th edition. You know, it was getting better, but it was still sometimes in that same ballpark of uh, not that great. But the 6th edition Tomb Kings especially. Um, really cool ideas of how they've... Um, you know, the way they look, but still not very good models. Um, and even the video that's up here, to me, from what I saw, it all looked like old stuff. I think we're just going to have a box with this guy and nothing else new. I think the Bretonian box is getting the, the lion's share of attention for new stuff. And this is sort of the, um, the consolation prize. Tomb King players are not getting a box of new stuff or even, like, some new stuff. It's just going to be this guy, and then a bunch of really dated looking looking stuff around him, which is unfortunate. Um, I am concerned about early adoption of uh, the old world by new players who can't look past this, um, because we've all heard the complaints online about how ugly the old models are from some new players who just cannot look past. Um, the fact that it's not the you know the latest and greatest in uh, computer automated design, computer assisted design. <clears throat> so yeah, just something to keep in mind. Uh, I'm gonna leave it there. Hopefully I'm wrong, but I, I unfortunately do think we are gonna see some pretty poor sculpts next to this guy and sort of cut the legs out from under him a little bit, so to speak. Um, but we'll see. Hopefully. Um, Hopefully it all works out. Or at least if it is old stuff, it's a really good value box with lots of it. Uh, I think that would balance it out pretty good at least. Anyways, uh, if you have any thoughts or comments on these guys, um, what you think we're going to see Monday with the um, charge phase, if anything major is going to change, uh, leave that in the comments. If it's already past that date, then don't worry about it. And if you just want to talk about Tomb Kings, uh, you know, obviously the comments are the place to do that. Anyways, thanks for watching, and everybody have a great day.